When you sit and meditate, it's a kind of karma, mental karma. We don't usually think of karma when we're meditating. We think of karma as something that has to do with what was done in past lives or what will give results in future lives. But actually, as the Buddha pointed out, the most important karma is not what was done in the past, it's what you're doing right now. Because right now, your decisions can have an impact right now as well. You stick your finger in the fire, and it's not going to wait until next, the next lifetime to burn. It's going to hurt right now. And it's especially true of the, the karma of the mind. We tend to think of the karma as being about things we do and things we say with the body and our speech. But most important is the karma of the mind, because the mind is what gives the orders. Because the karma lies in the intention, and the intention is something that comes out of the mind. So that's what you've got to train. Like right now, you're training your intention, you're going to stay right here. Watch the breath coming in, watch the breath going out. Although the word watch is not quite right. Feel the breath coming in, feel the breath going out. You realize that the breath is a whole body process. It's not just the air coming in and out, coming in and out the lungs through the nose. It's the movement of energy in the body that allows the air to come in to begin with and expels it when it goes out. So think of the whole body breathing in together, the whole body breathing out together in a way that feels comfortable. You can ask yourself if long breathing feels good, try that for a while. And then try short breathing and then compare the two, which feels better. Then you can try deep or shallow, heavy, light, fast, slow, until you get the right combination. Then you just stick with that combination as long as it feels good. If it starts feeling tiresome, well, you can change again. The thing is that while you're trying to focus on the breath, other thoughts will come up into the mind. This is where you have to make a determination that you're going to stay with the breath as much as you can and not let other thoughts pull you away. If they do pull you away, you just drop them. Because that's your choice in the present moment. What comes up unintentionally in the mind, that's the result of past actions. The things you've thought about, the things you've looked at, the things you've listened to in the past. But what you decide to do with those things that suddenly appear in the mind, that's your present karma and that's what matters. The simple fact that unskillful things appear in the mind doesn't reflect on the state of your mind right now, it reflects on things you've done in the past. What reflects on the state of the mind is your decision of what to do with those thoughts. So learn how not to give in to them. They have also lots of ways of saying, well, come on, just let the mind think about this just once, then I'll go away. Well, if you think about it once, it's not going to be just once. It's going to become a habit. It'll come again and say, just once more, just once more. And even though it's just one time each time, those ones add up. You've got to make it zero. They come and you say no. I've got more important work to do. I've got better work to do. Or if they say, well, if you don't give in now, we know that you're going to give in down the line anyhow, so give in now and make it, make it a lot easier. Say, nope, I don't know about down the line, but I do know that right now I can be responsible for right now. I'm going to stay with the breath. And the fact that you're making the breath comfortable makes it a lot easier. Because all too often these state, these thoughts, these what the Buddha calls defilements or gelesas. Hijack your breath. When you're angry, you breathe in a way that makes it really uncomfortable in the body. And when it's uncomfortable in the body, you tell yourself, I can't stand this. I've got to express my anger. I've got to get it out of my system. And when you do that, you just create more bad karma. What you've got to do is learn how to take the breath back. Even though there may be anger in the mind, you don't have to breathe in an angry way. You can breathe in a calm way. And that undercuts the power of the anger. You may say, this seems fake or false. It's not what I really think. But then what you really think keeps changing. And if certain things you think a lot, just tell yourself, it's just the force of habit. I've created bad habits in the past, so I can create good habits now. That's what you're doing each time you bring the mind back to the breath, bring it back to the breath. 
And if in the course of the meditation you spend the whole hour just bringing it back, bringing it back, don't regard that as a failure. Don't regard it as a bad session. The bad sessions are the ones where you just let the mind wander as it likes. The ones where you're fighting are the ones where you're making progress. Each time you bring the mind back, it's a victory for mindfulness, a victory for alertness. Because you have to realize that to make it easier for yourself, it's not just a matter of sitting here with your eyes closed. You have to think about how you go through the day, what you look at, what you listen to, all the different things you, you can take in through the senses. You have to ask yourself, why am I looking? Why am I listening? Who is doing the looking? Who is doing the listening? Is greed doing the looking? Is lust doing the looking? Is anger doing the listening? It's very easy for these things to slip in and take over. And when they take over, what's, what are the results? You clutter up your mind with more bad habits. And they've got to clean it out again the next time you meditate. So realize the best policy is to, go th as you go through the day, try to exert some control over your looking and listening and the way you smell things, the way you taste things, the way you touch things. To say, I want to do this with wisdom. All too often we hear the word restraint of the senses. It sounds like we have to put on blinders and put in earplugs. We don't look, we don't listen. But the Buddha didn't say that. He said, just watch out. What are the things that set you off? Well, don't focus on those things. Set, focus on their antidotes. If there's a person you lust for and you know that you shouldn't be lusting for that person, okay? Remember, the human body has lots of unattractive parts to it. In fact, if you go just a millimeter below the surface of the skin, just took that much off of the body. You couldn't look at it. You wouldn't want to get near. So every beautiful thing has its unbeautiful side. You learn how to focus on that. As for people who do things that make you angry, try to look for the good side. Especially if there's someone who's close to you. You have to remember the reason they're close to you. They wouldn't have gotten close to you if they didn't have some goodness. So think about that, so you don't give total rein to your anger over somebody that you don't know all that well, but all you can think about is you can't see anything good to that person. You have to have some compassion for them. That person is building a lot of bad karma for himself. So either way, there's no reason for you to get worked up into anger, because then the anger takes, takes over and then it prevents you from seeing things clearly. Situations where there would be something that you could do to improve the situation, but if your anger gets in the way, you do the wrong things. So it's in this way that you develop good qualities in the mind, not only as you meditate here with your eyes closed, but as you watch over your senses as you go through the day. Whenever you want to look at something, you ask, where is this desire coming from and where is it going to lead? Because the simple act of looking is a type of karma. The simple act of listening is a type of karma. So you want to do it skillfully, so that when the time comes to meditate, you're right here. You haven't been cluttering your mind up with all sorts of garbage. So you find that over time there's less and less and less that you have to struggle with. So remember, even though we tend to think of mental karma simply as something very innocent, it's the most important factor, because without the mental karma there wouldn't be any physical karma, there wouldn't be any verbal karma. So keep looking at the source, taking care of the source, remembering. As the Buddha said, the mind is the forerunner of all things. Everything you experience comes out of the mind. We tend to think of ourselves as being on the receiving end all the time. This person did that to me, why did he do that? This person said this to me, why did she say that? We tend to focus the causes of suffering on things outside. But the Buddha says, we're creating suffering, but we also have the, all the time. So look inside for the source. And when you change the source inside, then you can learn how to create happiness instead, well-being instead. Now you're going to make this determination to be responsible in how you create your environment. That's when you get on the right track. If you're looking for a happy new year, this is a good way to develop a happy new year. Remember that you do have the power 
through learning to be more skillful in the way you approach things, and the way you think about things, and look at things, the way you train your mind. As long as you have that power, learn how to use it well. Because when you use it well, it can create a happiness that's really lasting. Happiness that takes nothing for, away from anyone else. Places no burdens on anyone at all. And that's a happiness that's really worth pursuing.